common relic. You come to me and you offer me a common relic? I'm relatively okay with that, actually. Defect with a little bit of a head start goes a pretty long way, and it's more chance to find the bag of preparation. Dreamcatcher. Card reward when we rest. Wouldn't exactly call that a great start, but it's fine. It does the job, usually. Do I value an early shop card remove? On defect here. Not without enough money. We got the burning elite then, or we could cross through the store to get through the burning elite, but then we lose an elite. That's fine. Defect's a pretty strong character in Act 1, owing to the starting Cracked Core and the dual cast card, which can perform pretty well compared to the cards of other characters. It's nevertheless possible to fall behind pretty quickly if you can't find cards that work well together with this character. Ooh. Beam Cell's a great starter. Helps your strikes do more damage and works with any attacks you pick up as well. Skim's good for the mid to late game. One of the best card draw cards there is, in terms of sheer card draw per energy invested. Loop is a bit slow paced, but nice and steady here, causing our front orb to activate an extra time. Currently, this is three damage per turn to a random enemy, which is not very good. But with different orbs and focus and an upgrade, it can do much greater things eventually. Only eventually. Get them, lightning orbs. Unfortunately, no way to know where the lightning orbs are going to go. It's all random all the time. And we get super attacked, which is very rude. So this is Beam Cell Strike Strike Dual Cast. Looks like it's... Better do it this way, then. Still not enough to KO, unfortunately. So we do have to take 12. Bummer. Ooh, a bullseye. Damage and the lock-on status makes lightning orbs and dark orbs hit harder. Or cold snap, an attack, and a frost orb in one. Actually really appreciate early bullseye. Especially alongside a beam cell, because then you're stacking debuffs. And they work well together as well. Sure, we'll go with a bullseye. I think one of the better early game attacks for defect. And a double lice encounter. Look at that. Bullseye already here to help, theoretically. Easy. Fusion. Not a card I advocate for much in Act 1. Spend energy now to get energy later. Kind of weird. Hologram's nice to get a card out of the discard pile. Compile drivers and attack that also draws. Both are pretty good. But I'm very much a hologram believer, personally, especially when you've already got a zero cost card like this beam cell. We do get offered money from the event, which means we'll be going to this shop as well. And then my anticipated path is probably this. And that means we can afford a relic at the store or a couple of good cards and a removal. <laughs> For example, we could buy Claw, the power. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we have enough to buy Chemical X and Reinforced Body. Let me double check the math on that. 78 plus 157. 235. So we're unfortunately 15 gold short of these two. Sadistic nature. We do have two debuff cards, but that does not does not good card sadistic nature make, unfortunately. I definitely like the idea of buying a potion. Block potion for 54 seems like a better deal than regen potion for 83 at the moment. Might want to rest here for a card, re card reward, although an upgrade seems like a good idea too. 
I could remove a defend and replace it with leap. That's a fun option. <laughs> definitely buy this, definitely buy a card remove. Yeah, let's replace a defend with leap. Kind of like that trade. Hmm. Sort of a weird store. So, do we upgrade or rest? Three elites, it's going to be pretty hard to justify a rest, but it's also going to be pretty hard to justify not upgrading. We would want to upgrade Zap or Leap. Or maybe Beam Cell. I'm thinking Zap, personally. Let's try it. Will this finally be the Defect Strike Mastery run? Um, I suspect this is going to be the Defect Die in Early Act 2 run. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I need all the help I can get. I can always opt out of the second elite if this one goes kind of badly. So far, so good. Well, this is definitely the turn we wake up. Leap next turn. Pretty good, actually. This is great. Bullseye making dual cast deal 12 two dam uh, twice is really quite exceptional. Could consider the swift potion here. Looks like it might be better next turn. Take some damage. Hmm. So next turn we are not getting attacked. Which means hologram the leap and defend is very reasonable here. Should probably use one of these potions. Let's use the block potion then. Okay, so we'll go bullseye, hologram, zap. Or the beam cell, rather. Zap's in the draw pile. Full block that way. Get a lot of bonus damage here. Okay. Got a bottled lightning with a seek. With a machine learning. What do I want to bottle here? Nothing? Skip the relic? Ew. Flaws here. Could have had a couple of these by now. Ah, should have taken the claw. Well, kunai is definitely a thing. That's the good news. Kunai with beam cells a good start. Now I want go for the eyes. The machine learning already fits. Keeping the strikes fits. That's good. That's very good. All right, let's not suicide. Let's uh, let's rest and get a card reward. Now I can take claw. Sure. The law has arrived. Please don't take my money. My money. I want it now. No. My bullseye hologram dual cast I cannot kill. We should hologram leap. Good fight. There's the go for the eyes, another zero cost attack. This one inflicts weakness if the enemy intends to attack. We love that with everything else we've got. Machine learning looking increasingly good as we add zero cost cards. Bad neutralize, still good. And we must face the gremlin knob. Did draw machine learning turn one. I don't think that's good enough though. Let's draw more cards now. 
better. Double the claw. Double the law. What's that next turn? Uh, how likely are we to kill next turn? Not particularly. Trying to figure out if playing Zap is reasonable or not. So we go to 41 this turn. Next turn, if I draw dual cast again, what's my damage output? Eight plus 24, plus four, plus six, 42. So yes. If I redraw the dual cast again, we actually kill. Okay. I'll play Zap, but not dual cast. If we play them both, it's a bit more awkward. What about defend here? Saves four this turn. Take five more next turn. That won't be worth it. Aha! Well, that worked out very well. We get meat on the bone, healing us if we end a combat below half health, as we already are. And another beam cell, which we haven't mastered, or go for the eyes or loop. With kunai, I'll happily take another beam cell. Best part about two beam cells is now I need to upgrade neither of them, instead of needing to upgrade one of them. Life is good. And this leap is doing good work too. That's why I really like Common Relic Start. Even if the initial relic isn't that good, eventually through sheer quantity of relics, you'll find something good. Tis inevitable. Ooh, Steam Barrier is pretty good with Kunai, but what about Second Leap? This would be the run, more than any other run, to take a second copy of Leap, because we already have Kunai and lots of zero-cost attacks, so a high base value block card is genuinely good. And we're even fighting the Guardian. Rarely is there a better opportunity to take a Leap than this. So let's go for it. The Blocking. Cold Snap's okay here. Okay, but not necessarily something we want to take, I would say. Spoon89, thanks for the 14 months of support. Have you ever played the Banner Saga? Just Banner Saga. Banner? Banner Saga. Yes, I've played the, the first one. Long time ago. Very interesting combat turn-based mechanics in the in those games. Didn't feel motivated to return to the series, but I, I had to just based on the um, the portfolio of the devs play the original one. Old Bioware employees is my understanding. I don't want any of these cards, ultimately. What are we upgrading here? Machine learning is a reasonable upgrade. Hologram is a very good upgrade. Bullseye is half decent too. It's a great hologram. We did an XCOM 2 playthrough last year, Roy G. Biv. I don't currently have any plans to um, to play XCOM. However, I did, speaking of XCOM-ish games, I did recently get to try the demo of Xenonauts 2, and I am officially 
quite excited by what I've seen of that game so far. I think it's going to make a really cool turn-based tactics experience. So I'm kind of eagerly awaiting more uh, refinement of that title. Yeah. And we can strike hologram claw. Yes. Or can maybe hologram. No, zap's not there. We could hologram bullseye. But I'd rather stack the claw. Yeah, Darkest Dungeon 2 is getting closer and closer to a full release. I'm quite excited to see uh, where that title ends up when it's uh, officially declared finished. Hiya! Unfortunately, don't get to full block this, but that's okay. Something something 37 health. Not quite half. We want to go to 35, actually. Should be doable. A claw. Though, hmm, I didn't think that through very well, did I? Next turn looks like a problem. Hmm. Better hologram go for the eyes, then. Oh, we transform. Well done. All right. I'd still like to take two, then, if possible. Three is reasonable. Three is just dandy. Oh, actually, no, I can't take three, because you're dying before you hit me. Well, GG. 37 health will have to do. How about an echo form? Kind of interesting with kunai. Maybe not the best, but definitely adequate here. Reboot and rainbow are not as great. Actually, this is a pretty good use case for reboot with all the zero cost cards. Uh, reboot, especially with an upgrade, could be a really good draw a card. Will I try out Hades too? Yes. Yes, I'm not sure if I'll I'll do it so on the initial early access release. I guess we probably will. Kind of have to. We streamed a couple hundred hours of Hades. And then definitely I get revisited again for the full release. Just like Potato, I'm not 100% sure how much of Hades I want to play during the early access period because I know it will be better if I wait. Man, Echo Form. But Echo Form though. Echo Form Runic Pyramid. A deck full of zero cost cards is definitely a deck that loves a, a uh, Runic Pyramid. I like that more than the Hammer or the Dome here for sure. This allows us to no longer discard our hand at the end of turn and can do some really nasty shenanigans, particularly if we find another hologram. Also lets us set up our best cards to be duplicated by the Echo Form each turn, which is also very powerful. Kind of a spooky looking layout of the elites this act, though. They are everywhere and they are angry. Thankfully, we have meat on the bone, but that won't save us if we die outright to getting clubbered. Ooh, especially if we have to path into the burning elite, which is. I mean, look at this wall of elites here. Spooky. I think that means we go this way. We at least get this rest site before the first elite. And then we could take a second rest site, but that would mean fighting the Burning Elite. We'll need good potions and such for that to be comfortable. Oof, chosen. 
Chosen's tough, man. Chosen hexes us with a debuff that says every time you play a non-attack card, put a dazed into the draw pile, which is really quite troublesome, actually. But thanks to our ability to retain cards, we don't care as much about all that nonsense. Six. It's a big number. What can I do about thirty six? Can hologram leap and use the weak potion? Is what I can do. Is there anything else I can do about thirty six? Not really. Bullseye has worn off, so we can't just hologram dual cast and get a kill. Do I still agree with my previous prediction about when I'm going to die? No, the meat on the bone and the kunai really changed things for us. We have good odds from here. Yeah, why do you hit so hard, Chosen? Please don't do that. None of us like it when you do that. One damage card to finish. A success. Boot sequence. This is incredible here because it is turn one block, which can help avoid early nasty problems in fights. If we don't need it, we get to retain it with the Runic Pyramid. And it can help us deploy the Echo Form, potentially, as well. Fusion's also not bad, but not nearly as good as boot sequence is. She's just going to play defend, take one damage, and keep these three cards for what looks like a troublesome next turn. Yeah, and we'd love two copies of Boot Sequence as well. That's true. Four strikes and you're out, bird. Nerd. Nerd bird. Well, this echo form is not getting played. That's definitely the case. And that's okay. Uh, incoming damage is 15 plus 16, 31. That's a lot of incoming damage. tend to find it better to focus on eliminating birds you've knocked out of the air rather than splitting your attention too much. Nature Ace, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Please enjoy your stay. Alright, you're dead, apparently. Good talk. Alright, life's going pretty well. We're not taking that much damage in our fights yet. Chill seems quite excellent here. A zero-cost way to gain a bunch of frost orbs. Or FTL is also quite excellent, as it's a zero-cost attack that also draws a card. And with Runic Pyramid, we can always have FTL in our hand for the early part of a turn. Feels like I actually want the FTL more than I want the chill. It's rarely something I feel is true, but here we are. Oh, membership card is here. Another claw is here. 
amongst many other beautiful things. One defect relic we haven't won with, the gold-plated cables. Our rightmost orb triggers its passive an extra time. That's also pretty good. Uh, if we take cool-headed anyway. <laughs> We're definitely going to take claw. Overclock almost looks pretty good too. Zero cost to draw two. Let's see. With Runic Pyramid, I actually really like that. Burns are not that bad with Pyramid. Hey, glad to hear it, Nature Ace. Very much appreciate it. Truth is, you also help me just by watching the YouTube vids. Anybody who uh, watches a lot of the YouTube, you're helping me do what I do full time, and I really appreciate it. Those who swing by the stream and sub and say kind messages like you do, even better. Never get tired of say of seeing people drop by and say, hey, I found my way here, and you're awesome. It's a good time. The Dolans, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Corsurge is an interesting one. We don't have any debuffs that we're inflicting on ourselves, but I could definitely see um, there being some utility there. Piece of pie, SK. Thanks for the five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. Why would Overclock be good here, but not on other runs? Because drawing into all these zero-cost cards quickly in combats is more important than ever, and because we can counteract the later problem of the burns by retaining our cards with the Runic Pyramid. So we have more need of the front-loaded draw and less impact for the eventual negative. That's why Overclock is good here. And let's remove one strike. We should really get rid of these. <clears throat> Mark Makar, thanks for the 300 bits. Halfway to channel cutie. You'll get there. I have no plans on retiring. How about a cool headed? Doesn't feel that great to pay for it. Unupgraded. It's an okay card. How about a hand of greed with membership card and runic pyramid? Actually, that's pretty good. Hand of Greed is a, a little obscene here. It does huge damage, stacks with the beam cells, and can reliably be used as a finisher to gain cash. And because we're getting double value on that cash, actually, it's pretty good. Sure, I'll take Hand of Greed and I'll take a... either a Liquid Memories or a Block Potion to go with it. Go with the block potion. Got an elite fight coming up soon. We also have a snake plant fight coming up now. Ouch. Oh, hey, I found a use for the block potion. Good talk. Actually an awesome fight, all things considered. Double dual cast. Bonk. There's the second boot sequence. Let's do it. Algorithm's also very, very good because we have the Echo Form and we can double it. Uh, however, the algorithm is not good in this elite fight, which is actually the most important fight of all. Uh, this might also be important. We'd much, much rather have boot sequence for the immediate couple of fights. And I, I think that means we, we can kind of disqualify the genetic algorithm from consideration at all. We, we really don't have room to consider this right now when the short term is so important. Uh, and we definitely can't have double boot sequence ride be our opening hand. That's awful. No, thank you. All right. Considering upgrading the Hand of Greed for more money, also, honestly, for more damage, we want a card that can kill a Red Slaver quickly, and Hand of Greed is it. Another good upgrade is the Overclock to make it three draws instead of two. But I think we're going to go with the Hand of Greed upgrade first. All right. Book of Stabbings first. It's actually a pretty good turn one. We get to go Beam Cell, Strike, Hand of Greed. Boot sequence, boot sequence. Overall, definitely worried about this fight. It's gonna be a tough one. I 
I almost just want to keep these. Take 24 right now. Actually, if I lose 24 health, what do I go to? We go to 34, which is just below half, actually. So I, I like just tanking this hit uh, and then keeping these boot sequences so that I can do something like play Echo Form. We only get one wound from tanking this 24 hit, whereas if I tank something like 7x3, we'll get three wounds. So yeah, just hit me. Just hit me. Probably want the weekend for a more impactful turn. Let's do this then. Okay, go for the Ice Claw Bullseye. We got another 24 hit next turn. I don't think this uh, Echo Form is going to get played. But we're almost done with the fight already, quite frankly. Definitely want to use the Dual Cast this turn. Or we want to hologram the bullseye. But I think we'd rather hologram the hand agreed, actually. So that we have beam cell hand agreed in hand. And I'll take a little bit more here. Good. We heal 12, we get the money, we get a shuriken, meaning we now gain strength for playing three crappy attacks in one turn, and that's going to make a huge difference. We could take a third leap, or a charge battery. How's it going, Salki? I think it'd be unlikely I ever play any old tycoon-style games. I didn't even play those growing up, for the most part. A little bit of the original Sim City, but those were kind of uh, a little outside my my range for most of it. Uh, so, here's my question. Knowing this isn't Super Book of Stabbing is actually rather encouraging. Do we go for the Burning Elite? We have an Explosive Potion and a Speed Potion. I can also rest prior to the Elite fight if we want a little bit more health. That would give us access to the shop behind the Elite which will be quite a bit of money. Max Hell Slavers would definitely be a big problem. And could potentially kill us from full health by sticking the handful of wounds or something. But I think with Shuriken we'll be okay. And Explosive Potion. I'm gonna do it. I think I do rest, though. We want a little bit more health so that we can tank damage from uh, Gremlin Leader in particular. Although, upgrading Go for the Eyes could also be a really big deal. I'm gonna rest. We get a card reward that way. Sunder seems like a good addition here. Although, Reinforced Body is also pretty good. Sunder and Hand of Greed kind of compete with each other, although Sunder's I mean, we're gonna we're gonna need help for slavers, and this bonks gremlins pretty nicely. Our act boss is bronze automaton. It's good for the orbs there too. I'll take sunder, and we get a molten egg. All future claws will say plus. Why not go for two regular elites? Because there's not a shop after the two regular elites. It's all about getting to the store. I think turn one Echo Form will be okay here. We got Max Health Grum Leader, which is pretty nasty. But this turn one went well enough. I'm I'm not concerned here. Maybe I should be, though. I really can't do very much damage. Hmm. Yes, I should be. Do I hollow the zap? 
No, I might need hologram next turn. Here it comes. Actually, wait. Um, let's use the explosive potion now, because then the lightning orb might kill it. Got him. Okay, here it goes. We still get attacked for 11 by 2. 11 by 3, rather. That's fine. Fun fact. If you attempt to echo form a card on a target, but you fail because the target died from the first instance of the card, then the echo form will instead apply to the second card that you play. Like so. Should have played leap there instead of taking one. Whatever. It's magic. Go hand agreed beam cell here. Want that hand agreed in hand for next turn though. this is lethal on Grum Leader. Because I see... I mean, if I double hand agreed, it's super duper lethal. But even if I don't double the hand agreed, I think we can get there. With like double claw. Then FTL beam cell, go for the eyes, strike. Hand agreed. Because of the shuriken, mostly. Yeah, that's going to be lethal. Easy. No math allowed, only bonking. Happy Flower, excellent with Pyramid. Claw plus, or go for the eyes plus. I think we want a claw. Law is law. All right, and we get to go to the shop. We we went through great effort to get to the store. So hopefully the store will showcase why I did that. Hmm, not a great turn one. 12 damage to the bird or more damage to Chosen? I think we're going to do more to Chosen here. Not sure if we can kill both of these with Hand Agreed, but we'll do our best. This is a great start. Getting Echo Form down. Very tempted to Essence of Steel here. Or Speed Potion full blocks, actually. It's nice and simple. Sure. Got a pretty good potion chance. Alright, let's see what happens. 2 by 6 and 9 by 2 First card we play is getting doubled. I think we double the Beam Cell on the bird here. Actually, hand agree the bird this turn, maybe? Yes, if we hologram claw, we super can. Sure. Okay, lots of days in the draw pile, sadly. It's okay. We've got the blocks. Uh, 
I'm not sure we can get away with uh, getting back to Hanagree, though. There's going to be another big attack next turn, and all of our hand is going to be dazed by block here. So I think I'm just going to kill the Chosen. Forget the money. Get our Dex Potion. Streamline, a Hologram or Chaos. The deck would love another Hologram, even an unupgraded one. Streamline's not too bad either. Block the first debuff we would get. Ornamental fan. If we play three attacks, gain some block. That's pretty good. What about scrape plus? Draw five cards. Keep anything that is zero cost. Panache is also pretty cool. If we play enough cards in one turn, deal damage to all enemies. Finesse is here for block and draw at zero cost. Also incredible. Can I buy Scrape, Finesse, and Ornamental Fan? Seems like a great shop overall. Actually really like Scrape. I'm gonna buy a Scrape and Finesse. Which does leave me enough for the Fan or a removal, but not both. Let's go for the Fan. Play three attacks to gain four block. Anchor was also pretty good, giving us turn one block so that we have a better odds of being able to retain the boot sequences. Which is also kind of cute. Need for Essence of Steel here? I don't think so. Looks like we're doing quite well. All things considered. Much to hologram block wise, that's okay. Place many attacks this turn. Yeah. Look at that. Only take one damage. Discarded. That's fine. Hmm. Hand of greed. Hello. Are you there? No. All of my attacks do too much damage. Very well. Cold snap plus. This force field doesn't get down to zero cost, otherwise I'd consider it. Take an event over a combat? Sure. No cold snap? No cold snap. Ball lightning isn't mastered yet, it's true. Just hasn't lined up. Okay, this is a good fight for multiple. Hand agreeds. Although Sunder's gonna probably want to kill one of the three. We have to be rather aggro in this fight. Like so. Alright, Romeo, you're dead. Heck, I might even hologram that Sunder. No, Mio. Wherefore art thou, No, Mio? Uh, sure.
There's Hand of Greed. Get him. Bear, yes. Alright, money was acquired. Claw was acquired. Law was acquired. Alright, now I'm going to upgrade overclock for more draw. The more zero-cost cards we have, the more card draw we want to add to this deck. The machine learning? Well, that's card draw. Shame we don't have ice cream or any, any way to keep this energy. We don't use on turn one. Kind of sad, really. You can keep that, for now. Mm -hmm. Twice to start. You're gonna die first. Clawing time. Would have been a perfect full block without the weaken even. Cute. Give me some money. GG. Well, that was rather one-sided. Now that we have four claws, the kunai, the ornamental fan, and the shuriken, uh, we're able to do some just hot nonsense each and every turn. Bias Cognition could have given us frost focus things, but I think we're beyond orbs on this run. And we should just take a either a second echo form so that we can echo form our echo form. Uh, or we should take a Seek so that we can get our Echo Form into play. Personally, I'm taking the second Echo Form. That also gives us a good reason to upgrade one of the two Echo Forms. That way, if we draw them both at the same time, we can retain one of them. Ooh, what about Pandora's Box? Transform Strikes and Defends. Or Calling Bell. Get a unique Curse of the Bell and three Relics. One common, one uncommon, one rare. Or Sneko Eye. Definitely not Sneko Eye Runic Pyramid with claws, that's for sure. Yeah, strikes are kind of okay because of all of our attack defense scaling, which makes me actually a little more inclined to go Curse of the Bell here. Oh, uh, we do get nine gold for Calling Bell, but you're right. Because we have Ceramic Fish, we actually get nine times six. 54 gold with membership card for taking the Pandora's box. Let's do that. We get a Cold Snap plus, more importantly, an All for One plus, as well as some other nonsense. There's the All for One. Does the Bell Curse get retained by Runic Pyramid? Yes. Yes, it does. Ooh, I could do four Elites this act, or I can do two shops. The shops are kind of close to each other. Two shops means only two elites. Let's do four elites. This deck can handle it. This deck can do anything. 
deck is invulnerable, as far as I can tell. Do I actually want rest sites? Yes. I want to upgrade Echo Form at minimum here. Let's go. Why would I do one shop three elites when I could do one shop four elites? There's no need for that. So we know Hand of Greed is already in the discard pile. Let's just scrape. Nice. Got to keep four cards from that. That's ridiculous. Another claw or another hologram or a rebound. Third hologram seems really appropriate. Four claws seems to me almost the optimal number. You really don't need much more than that. And I really like the holograms with the scrape because they can get back whoa, whatever card's been discarded. Hologram. Perfect. So we hologram hand agreed and kill this thing before it explodes. And then we try to get to one of the other holograms. May unfortunately be easier said than done. There it is. Excellent. Three for three. We got 75 gold from Hanagreed in that fight. We take a leap or a stack. Stack could actually be half decent here, but I think I'm going to pass. Would this deck tank madnesses? They'd definitely be worth considering because of the hologram all for one interaction. Yeah, I think we would take them. How about double orb walkers? Do we take those? This fight could actually go rather badly for us rather quickly. But I think we can I think we can manage them. Problem is our turn one's a bit uh, tepid here. Definitely focus on the one with lesser health first. If we can kill one of them quickly, we'll be okay. I'm gonna keep this beam cell in hand rather than using it this turn. I'm gonna dex potion in this fight because I think we need all the health we can get. Two burns in the draw pile is already pretty iffy. Scrape looking great though. Unfortunately, a lot of the zero cost stuff's already in our hands. Let's overclock first. Now we're going to scrape. Is this the turn to do it? Doesn't matter. One would hope yes. Note that for scrape to work properly, you do have to have space in hand for all five draws. Well, we get claw and finesse. I like it. Play the claw, draw. Form's gone, and that's fine. Alright, we really have to kill this orb walker next turn. Four burns in the draw pile is now a really big problem, but we're okay. We have a kill on the orb walker with hand agree, no less, and the ability to hologram something important. And all for one's coming up soon, so I think we're through. I think we did the, the tough part of this fight. Let's go claw. Hand of Greed for a kill. Hologram, go for the eyes to block for a lot. Otherwise, we're taking a bit more damage than I'd like here. Hologram Finesse also works. As it blocks for a reasonable amount and draws one. I want the extra proc here. So no Echo Forms got put in play because of how, uh, how much pressure there is short-term in this fight. 
But that's all right. Let's do biased and full block. Next turn we can beam cell, bullseye, dual cast shenanigans. And we've got fission as well to help out here. Very notably, if we play all for one, we return all zero cost cards from the discard pile to our hand, or at least all the ones we have space for, which will be several. Currently just three, actually. FTL Claw Overclock. That's pretty good. And then we can play Fission after that. Can we get off the hand agreed? Yeah, check this out. So we go Claw, Hologram, Hand Agreed. Gain two energy from Fission. Play Hand Agreed. And there it is, the ice cream I've been begging the game to create. Energy is now conserved between turns. And another claw. Okay, I'll take one more. Oh. There's the second finesse? That's cute. We'll have double finesse. For the first time. Tungsten rod would reduce damage dealt to us by one. That's pretty good. Abacus gives us block whenever we shuffle the draw pile, and we could buy a reboot alongside. Maybe giving us a chance to find double reboot. And we might as well take the upgrade attacks relic, the whetstone, because we can afford all of this. And with the membership card, we'll have plenty more cash by the time we hit the next shop. So we might as well buy as much as we can, which is all three relics. And finesse, and reboot, and a card removal. On probably dual cast, actually. Do I even want this bias cog? <laughs> I'm not sure. And then maybe a swift potion? Might as well. Sunder Mastery is already done, yes. Yes, indeed. So hype, we have ice cream now. What do I actually spend that energy on? Hologram loops, of course. Of course. That's why we don't have a reinforced body. We don't need a reinforced body. Also Echo Form. Ice cream makes it infinitely easier to get Echo Forms in play, of course. I still think I should upgrade one of them. Don't finish the fight that way. I don't need another claw. I'll take another go for the eyes, though, for the late game. One more of these. Sweeping Beam Plus actually half decent, too, at this point. Yeah, I wanted to be able to double boot sequence in case of this nonsense. Stinky. If you give me burns, I'll just give myself even more burns. So, we can just use hologram to fetch hologram anytime we've got excess energy to get essentially as much block as we want. Pretty good. Kind of wants a frozen eye, though.
Satisfying. Preserved Insect will make the remaining elites on this run even easier to kill. There's a real reinforced body if we want one, but I think I just showed with Hologram why we don't actually need one. Goodbye. I also don't need uh, self-repair with meat on the bone. Missed hand agreed there? Yes, I did. That's okay. Pretty unlikely I'll band it, because we got Watcher to do before Clan gets played again. Play this, sure. This would be a good time to think about the swift potion. Maybe next turn. Attacked by Repto. Pretty weak turn overall. Not that weak, actually. I can work with this. Dad joke for Lord Bio. How many biology jokes do I have? Hmm. All right, here's one I just came up with. Uh, a student walks into a classroom talking loudly on their phone. The teacher interrupts and says, hey, you can't have that in here. The student says, oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was cellular biology and walks out of the room. Ooh, I like a gambling chip. How many claws is too many? We're already at five claws? That's plenty of claws. Two boot sequences is also plenty. Single. Gotta skip it for the blue key. What important upgrades do we have? Another hologram upgrade, really, really important. I wouldn't mind upgrading fission. No, upgrading reboot's more important than fission. Did we not get hand drill mastery yesterday? We did. Although if it's not on the spreadsheet, uh, that might be because the sheet's a little bit behind. Yeah, the sheet's a little bit behind. I'll get that updated soon. I don't think it's uh, updated with yesterday's runs. The bot keeps track, but the, the spreadsheet's not uh, automatically updated like the bot is. Oh yeah, or the Echo Form upgrade that I said I wanted to. Sure, we'll do that first. Ultimately, we have the upgrades we need to get all three cards upgraded. So that part's nice. A claw. That part's rude, though. We got scrape. Acceptable. 
All right, reboot. Try again. Good. Easy full block. So now the first three cards each turn are played twice. If you use Echo Form to duplicate Echo Form, you get some pretty silly outcomes like that. Bonk. Dead Branch. Whenever we exhaust a card, add a random card into our hand. Hmm. It's actually not that many exhaust cards in this deck, so I'm not that afraid of Dead Branch with Runic Pyramid. Normally I wouldn't really like taking them together, but here I think they do well. This is not going to be the Rebound Mastery run. Let's take the, uh, the Branch. That will lose to still Chaos, though. I'll take the Branch. Times three. I'm close to being able to kill, but that's not what I actually want to do here. back. We could take an Amplify to try to amplify Echo Forms, but I think that's a little awkward. I don't really want another unupgraded Hologram either, actually. I'm going to skip these cards. I'd rather take an Event in Elite than a Combat in Elite. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Oh, you poor giant head. How little you know of how ruined you are. Go, go for the eyes, rebound, all for one. Get all of these cards back into my hand. Play Beam Cell, Claw, Zap, Finesse, Finesse, Beam Cell, all for one again. Get Wreck Giant Head. Um, try to find hand agreed, I guess. Although I don't think we're going to get there. We could have actually just killed Giant Head on turn one if we wanted.
Here's where the dead branch is actually a problem. Oh well. Good stuff. Recycle? Interesting with dead branch. Already mastered Sunder. Too late for algorithm. Definitely too late for algorithm. What is the percentage in the top right? Yeah, this is a mod called Info Mod, which displays our chance of finding a potion from the next combat. Potion chance is constantly changing in Slay the Spire. Whether or not you find a potion uh, in the current combat will modify your chance for the next combat. Up or down. The opposite of whether you found one or not. Let's get to the weak punt. And the cards. But do don the red mask, gain 222 gold. Be plenty rich for the Act 4 shop. I might rest in Act 4 here, but right now I want to upgrade either Hologram or let's upgrade Reboot. Get two more cards into our hand when we play that. Time Eater is a little tricky. Oh dear, Time Eater is very tricky. Definitely should have done that next turn. This works though. Playing three attacks to scale our stats in turns where we can is a pretty good idea. Might play this bias cog a little later in the fight. The echo forms will do good work for us as well. Makes a storm, I probably won't play. Well, I need to for card count this turn. It's hologram, one of these claws. Alright, now's our chance to do as much damage as possible, ideally bringing Time Eater below half health on this turn. Health mark, good. Glad we upgraded that echo form. That would have been an embarrassing way to lose it. Play this one. Double this one next turn. Actually, I'd like stack to block for as much as possible next turn. Let's stop here. Ooh, meteor strike. Hello. Seems pretty okay. GG. All right, next boss is the Awakened One. Shouldn't be nearly as much trouble as uh, the Time Eater just was.
Not the greatest turn overall here, huh? Hmm. Guess we double claw. That wasn't too bad. 22 block, we're fine. Can't play all for one now? Yes, I can. It works. Who put all these voids into my... Oh yeah, I did. Okay, fair enough. Could take damage to set up meat on the bone. I'm probably going to rest to full health anyway going into the next act, so I don't think it matters too much. Alright, we get tons of cash for Act 4. To thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source? All this cash. Yeah, we're missing enough, I'm just gonna rest here. Since we also get the added card reward. Hologram, steam barrier, charge, battery, no thanks. This is all about mastering the finesse, the boot sequence, and the beam cell. Could get a second machine learning. Could get yet another claw. We can bottle one of our echo forms. That's very good. And leap. That's right, leap. No double reboot, unfortunately. We have already done the cauldron, but we could buy another cauldron. Dupe pot plus bottled echo form. That seems great. Bottle the unupgraded one. Take a dupe pot. Could take a third boot sequence. It's actually pretty good. Now that we have the uh, bottled echo form and the gambler's brew. The uh, uh, gambling chip. Card remove. Bullseye can go. We never found a second bullseye either, right? Turnip's okay here. Sunder can go too, actually. Anything else here? No, I like the current potions, I think. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. Could have bought the fairy in a bottle, but I chose not to. Hmm. 
currently only taking one. I suppose I'm okay with that. Cool. First card gets doubled. I think that boot sequence. Bullseye, go for the eyes, weakens the Spire Spear. Could cool headed to draw one more. I think I'm just going to reboot. Gain six block, six new cards. The program's only going to save me one health. Machine learning leap zap. Definitely play this. Go for the eyes is not doing a whole lot. We could rebound and go for the eyes, and that would help for next turn. But then I'm facing the wrong way this turn, so I don't think so. I think I'd rather have the extra energy for next turn. Take a little bit. This turn's a slight problem, but only a slight problem. Double go for the eyes then? Sure. So I can rebound finesse if I want to. And then scrape for it. Or we can do some other shenanigans. Let's rebound the finesse. The Grim Rebound get go for the eyes back. That'd be cute, but not necessary. Looks like a kill to me. Good. Make my life nice and easy. Thank you. Since Burner on turn six of the heart fight will become intangible. That's pretty good, actually. As long as we can survive through the initial turns, which shouldn't be too problematic here. Three upgraded attacks before us. We've already got all that we need, though. The double beam cell, all the claws, all the goodness. Our main goal is not get eviscerated by beat of death. And I think the combination of kunai and fan will get us there. Cool. I think we do, in fact, want exactly this as the opening hand. We're just going to dupe pot the echo form so that I duplicate the first two cards each turn. Yeah, we do have two beam cells already. One, two. It's one of the earliest cards we got a pairs of for this run. And there's the second echo form for next turn. Incredible. I play this beam cell now. Yes. Oh, I meant to dupe pot that. That's right. Uh, we'll dupe pot the second one then. But you're right, I did mean to dupe pot that. And then didn't after I said I would. But duping this echo form should be sufficient. This will get played three times. So now four Echo Forms per turn. Double this, double this, double this. Actually, only that only got played one time. That's fair. Then these don't do a whole lot. Okay. Mixed feelings. I'm going to live through this, though. That's the important part. 
Double equilibrium seems like a good idea. Stack is not that much block yet, but it will be by the end of the turn. It sure will be. Double finesse. Sure. Claw. It's fine. Get that twice as well. Draw three cards. Go for the eyes. Here we go. And a free force field. Excellent. Not ready to all for one yet. In fact, I actually think we want the stack for later in the same combat. Upon review of the footage here. Glacier's kind of hype. Stop it for the moment. Perfectly activated meat on the bone value. Obviously. I guess I'm going to go double glacier, double defrag, now that we have those in hand. And now let's double white noise, giving me two powers. And I can choose one to double. Uh, which I guess is going to be Echo Form. Then I'll double Turbo. And then double Echo Form again. So now we have eight copies of Echo Form in play, as it should be. Build your own cozy chair. And then I can double bias cog to do some hilarious stuff later in the fight. I've actually got intangibility coming our way. I'm going to double this too. All right, good talk. Time meter literally crying in the corner. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight. That's all we got. And now we're intangible, so let's go. One. Two. Three. Damage already capped. Four. Guess we're good. It's like having the Baylor's chair in play all over again. Although not quite as ridiculous. GG. Double Electro. Get absolutely zapped upon. Mr. Hart. GG. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.